you hear it I, there is one person that really has been asking me what is the new name of CFL that's Shema Raganji he asked me dad you need to tell me the name I said it's a secret and many of you have asked me when I said we are in the process of changing the name. And even some of the funders who are here, they said, what is the new name? I said the new name will not, will not be revealed until May 8th. Community financial literacy officially is going to change its name to Prosperity Maine, the Center for Financial Education. I'm very, very excited. Thank you all for coming tonight. Ten years seems like yesterday, and it means a lot to me, to the Board of Prosperity Maine, to the staff, and the many of the volunteers who have spent their time volunteering for this organization. I would like to start by thanking all the sponsors for this special event. Special thanks goes to our lead sponsor, Hennefeld. If you can hold your applause until we finish all the sponsors because we have a long list. Our old port sponsors, IDEX, and Key Bank. Our Bayside sponsors, uh, Infinity Federal Credit Union, Man Credit Union League, UBS, Norway Savings Bank, Machaya Savings Bank. We also have many organizations on the Rosemont sponsorship that you can see on the board, including Seaport, UNEM, Poland Financial Group, and the other group that you saw. Thank you. And finally, we have also the Deering sponsorship. All of your support, please welcome me to thank them for the wonderful support for this organization. I also want to thank all the volunteers. This work cannot be done by Claude alone, or the work we have done was not done by Claude, and I do not want to take any credit for this. It's a collective work. All the volunteers who have supported the organization, thank you so much. But let me ask all the founding board members who are still on the board 10 years later to stand up so they can be recognized. We have Reverend Mutima. We have Enko Kanakan. We have Karen Anderson. We have Scott Kerr. I'm not sure if he's still in the room. And we have our chairman of the board, Bill Brown. Please give them applause. If we can say that today we are celebrating our 10th year anniversary, these folks have been on board since then, and they continue to be committed for, this work, for the work of this organization. I also want to acknowledge everybody who is on the current board and the advisory board and also staff. Please, if you can stand up to be recognized. The current board, the staff, and the advisory board, please, if you can stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I want to recognize all the students who have taken any course at Community Financial Literacy Now Prosperity Maine, if you can rise where you are. Everybody who has taken a class, please stand up so we can, you can be recognized. <laughs> uh, 
Esther, you took a class, honey. You, get, you better stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Each one of these students have a story to tell. And you're going to hear from some of them tonight on a podium when they go on stage to share their personal stories and accomplishments with community financial literacy. These are the future of men. These are the future of men's economy. These are the future of the workforce of tomorrow. I also want to acknowledge all the vendors who are here tonight. Special thanks. They are there. Special thanks goes to Seaglass with Sally, who is our event coordinator. <coughs> I also want to shout a special thanks for one of our students who even took the video that we saw, who was in our class, and is also a photographer. V, please, if you can stand up. Thank you. <coughs> I also want to take this opportunity to recognize any elected officials who might be in the room. I know that we have a representative from Senator King, and also I was expecting some uh, city councilors. If they are here, please, you can rise so we can recognize you. Thank you. I want to say that many of the funders and the donors always want to know what is the impact that your organization is having in the organization or in the community. Prosperity Man has done a lot, but <coughs> I want to show you some of the accomplishment we have done in the last few years. Since Prosperity Maine started. <coughs> Excuse me. We have helped over 3,000 people in our programs. Many of these people didn't even have a bank account when they came to us. No, they didn't even have any credit history. <coughs> but Today, I'm proud to say that many of these people are now working and also contributing to the economy of this state. Let me highlight one of the uh, books that you saw over there. I have so many partnerships with so many organizations, but I want to highlight individually uh, just uh, Coastal Enterprises. Thank you. We've been working with the Coastal Enterprises for a few years. Together, we have accomplished a lot. We were able to help about 190 families, of which between the matching savings they made together and their savings, we have helped. It's, it's a total of saving of 1136000 Of which, of which, they purchase assets that total 1.6 million, and all these assets they purchased are here in Maine. Thank you very much. I hope that I saw many of our funders, our sponsors, our donors, I'm sure that they see how much impact Prosperity Maine, the Center for Financial Education, is doing in a community. And we continue to do more. Why did we change our name? We changed our name to reflect 
the evolution of our work since we've started 10 years ago, as well as the increased diversity of the client we serve. We are rebranding community financial literacy to, pro to Prosperity Maine, the Center for Financial Education. Our new name reflects the broad scope of services that the organization provides to our core clients and demographic. The immigrants, asylee, refugees, and even recently, our low-income manners. At the beginning, we're only providing financial literacy and one-on-one -on -one counseling. But later on, we realized that it was not enough. Financial education was good, but not good enough. So 10 years ago, I had a vision that all men's immigrants and refugees, their families, and their communities could reach financial stability and improve the quality of life. The vision was great, but the mission was narrow. That's why we wanted to build a prosperous man with all of us together. The prosperity man. Thank you. Prosperity men, board and staff, including yourself who are here tonight, I ask you to start tonight to just spread the word and welcome us in the next journey of Prosperity Maine so that they know what used to be as CFL is now Prosperity Maine. I'm going now to call Helen to come on stage so that she can introduce the next speaker. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Helen Andrioli. I'm the vice chair of the board at Prosperity Maine, as we are now known. Uh, I'm also a member of the Marketing and Development Committee that helped put this event together. Yesterday, we received an unexpected but a very welcome request to add a couple minutes to the program. So uh, it is with my great pleasure that I invite Gail Kieser to come up from uh, Senator King's office for a special acknowledgment. join me. Senator King was so sorry he couldn't be here um, because he very much wanted to acknowledge what a major, major contribution you and your organization have made to truly, truly making Maine the land of opportunity for many, many people. And we thank you deeply. Um, so this is a small token of his appreciation. Um, I would like to present to you. And it, it already has a typo because it says, congratulations to Community for Financial Literacy. We can fix that. <laughs> um, on the occasion of its 10th anniversary, supporting vulnerable immigrants and creating opportunities for economic and social integration into our community through financial education, good practice, and setting aspirations with deepest gratitude, United States Senator Angus King. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to receive this recognition. I should say that the 2017 was the year of leadership at, at Prosperity Maine because we were so well recognized by many organizations, including the Chamber. Now, as you know, every year we give awards to many organizations that have supported Prosperity Man. Tonight, I'm going to invite my friend Sherry to come forward and announce the winner of this year's award. Please welcome. Good afternoon. How about those performers, huh?
I live in Portland, Maine. I could not be more proud to say those words right now. I'm joined today by um, some other Hannaford associates that are in the room as I look around. And I want you to know that we are all extremely proud and honored to be here with you tonight to celebrate the work of Prosperity Maine and bring awareness to that. Claude, we are so proud to partner with you and congratulations on 10 years to you and your wonderful staff and all of those volunteers and other supporters for making a difference for new Mainers. Community is so important to all of us at Hannaford. Being in the grocery business, we're fortunate to often see firsthand the unique fabric that weaves through each community that we serve. We often see people connecting, planned and unplanned, in our stores, and we absolutely love that. We work to foster that through in-store fundraising, an array of dietitian services, and other initiatives. We have amazing associates that really care deeply about their communities. They inspire us every day to dive deeper, to find new and creative ways to make a greater impact. We are also inspired by new Mainers who are building lives in these communities, contributing their hard work and intelligence to our state, starting businesses, and giving of themselves through their own volunteer efforts and friendship. The new Mainers that have joined us at Hannaford bring knowledge and skills to the workplace that have enhanced our business and shown us new and different perspectives to ensure that we are meeting the needs of all of our customers. We strongly believe in leaders like Claude across this city and many others that are in this room tonight who demonstrate through your actions the strength and beauty of diversity. We appreciate that you are working hard to build social and economic stability to this state that we all love so much. We thank you for working to create a future that helps us and our children to prosper. Thank you all for being here tonight and thank you for all that you do to keep your communities healthy. So as Claude mentioned, I have the distinct honor and pleasure tonight to help Prosperity Maine recognize some, um, some folks. These annual awards were created to give organizations, individuals, or businesses that have demonstrated excellence in serving or partnering with Prosperity Maine to provide opportunities to refugees, immigrants, and asylees. The first award that I'm giving out tonight, or we are giving out tonight, you're joining me up here, right, Claude? Yes. Is the Commitment to Service Award. Community Financial Literacy, now known as Prosperity Maine, was founded in 2008 at Claude's residence on Forest Avenue. The most immediate need to nurture the success of the organization was office space. Recognizing that the mission of Portland Housing Authority aligned with CFL's mission, Claude approached Mark Adelson in early 2009. At that time, Mark was Deputy Director of PHA. Being newly established, Claude had very little to show for CFL's credibility. With only the mission and a clear vision of CFL's potential impact to support his request, Claude asked PHA to provide the office space. Mark's belief in the work was immediately evident and he didn't hesitate to help. PHA provided office space for two years until CFL moved to the Avesta housing location on Cumberland Avenue in 2012. Prosperity Maine would like to thank PHA and Mark Adelson for believing in the mission. They have played a vital role in the organization's continued success. The 2017 Commitment to Service Award goes to Portland Housing Authority. Please join me in welcoming PHA Executive Director Mark Adelson to the stage to receive this award.
Thank you so much. Good evening. Um, on behalf of the Portland Housing Authority Board of Commissioners and staff, I want to thank CFL for this wonderful award. We tr we're truly honored by this recognition. PHA is in its 75th year of providing affordable housing to Portland residents. <clears throat> Through the properties we own and manage and the uh, other programs, the vouchers we administer, uh, now over 3,200 apartments in Portland are, are, with the, are we work with. In all, we house and impact the lives of 6,200 residents in Portland in all aspects of housing, from homelessness to home ownership. On its most fundamental level, providing affordable housing is about the opportunity for success. It provides the stability to get an education, a job, and the services needed to succeed. We've been helping to house the refugee and immigrant community coming from war-torn countries across the globe for almost 50 years. It's been a, an important part of our work. We have wonderful tenants that work hard to improve the lives of their families and are thankful for any assistance they receive. For PHA, it's never been just about putting a roof overhead. Resident services are a critical part of our agency's mission. We help lay the groundwork for success with our services and programs, but we can't do it on our own. We need and rely on community partners like CFL to help our residents take the next steps to provide targeted services to move our residents further down the road to success. Other valued partners include Portland Adult Ed, Boys and Girls Clubs, Greater Portland Health, just to name a few, and there's so many more. Many years ago, we recognized that when it comes to the most important things that our residents need to succeed, financial literacy is near the top of the list. And we're glad that 10 years ago, CFL stepped in to fill that need. You do an amazing job helping our residents and other new Mainers, teaching them the systems and linking them with other resources that can help. We're proud to call CFL our partners, we look forward to con continuing to work with you. Congratulations on your 10th anniversary, wishing you 50 more years of success. And thank you again for this wonderful recognition. Our next award is the Outstanding Community Partner Award. Coastal Enterprise Incorporated has partnered at CEI, has partnered with CFL, now Prosperity Maine, for over six years. The partnership was made possible by Claude's friend and mentor, former CEO of Coastal Enterprise, Ron Phillips. CEI helps to grow good jobs, environmentally sustainable enterprises, and shared prosperity in Maine and in rural regions across the country by integrating financing, business and industry expertise, and policy solutions. CEI envisions a world in which communities are economically and environmentally healthy, enabling all people, especially those with low income, to reach their full potential. Prosperity Maine and CEI, and this is, Claude mentioned this earlier, I'll say it again. Cross, Prosperity Maine and CEI have helped asylees and refugees with savings and matching funds totaling $1,136,000. Amazing, right? Together, they have helped 190 individuals and families purchase assets valued at $1.6 million. That makes it pretty understandable why the 2017 Outstanding Community Partner Award goes to Coastal Enterprise. Please join me in welcoming Jennifer Sporzinski, Senior VP of Workforce and Business Development Services for CEI, to the stage to receive this award. Good evening. We at 
CEI would like to congratulate Prosperity Maine on this important 10-year anniversary. Uh, thank you, Claude and Clement, and the entire CFL team for giving CEI the Outstanding Partner Award. I can say we're truly honored to receive this and be recognized by you in this way, Claude. Um, but I'm up here accepting the award, and I do uh, actually feel like we need to acknowledge that this award really goes to Jill Lorem, who is our IDA coordinator at CEI, and she's in the audience today. <laughs> Jill helped initiate that relationship with Prosperity Maine um, and a connection with Claude. Uh, with a simple contract for Claude, because back then Claude was teaching the classes, to teach financial literacy classes to our IDA participants. That was in 2009, and to where we are now, a fully integrated partnership with our IDA program at Prosperity Maine. Jill recognized the potential of Prosperity Maine, and really Claude, before many had heard of him, and she wanted to support that endeavor. For many years together, we've worked hard to develop that from that simple contract relationship more into a working partnership on the IDA program. The partnership weaves CEI and CEF uh, Prosperity Maine's expertise together and has resulted in such amazing outcomes from the community as already highlighted today. Again, thank you for the award and congratulations to Prosperity Maine on providing much needed services in Maine on building a team and sustaining the organization to where it is today. This is not an easy task, Claude. I hope you enjoy this night and this great celebration. Thank you. Let me ask Grace and Shema to come on stage. As I said earlier, these are the junior volunteer at Prosperity Maine. Grace came to our office a few days ago to volunteer, and I was amazed how she was able to do a lot of work that really contributed to this evening. Also, Shema, technically we have a fight every evening at home telling me that he's the staff of CFL. And I said, you need to volunteer first before you can be a staff. So they're going to uh, be handing the awards tonight to those who are going to receive the volunteer of the year. This is something that we really take seriously at Prosperity Maine. Those who work in a nonprofit arena know that we cannot succeed without having volunteers. The 2017 Volunteer of the Year goes to Craig Tribuno and Helen Andreoli. These two folks, I will tell you that this is a surprise. Mara, Clement, Paul, and I worked so hard to hide the program while Helen was preparing the event so that she doesn't see it. And I tried to make sure that even if Craig is on one leg, that he can be here tonight without telling him that he's going to get an award. These two folks have done amazing work even though both of them are new to the board of directors. Last year, I was impressed to see one person cooking for the entire event by himself. We didn't pay any penny for last year's event. It was through Craig Tribunal. Please give him hands. Thank you, Craig. Helen is amazing. 
Sometimes I wonder whether she works at, C, at the Cuba Prosperity Main or she, she's just a volunteer. She joined the board after looking for one year to, to just volunteer on our board. And I knew why she waited so that long, because she had the talent and skills that she wanted to show and provide. She's amazing. The same thing she did last year, organizing this event. She's a vice chair of the board. She's also a chair of the development and marketing committee. She works so hard. She's a donor. She's a, a, a committee member. She's a board member. And she does everything at CFL. Please, let us welcome Craig and Helen on stage to receive these awards. I will say that this was a surprise, so I'm not sure if any one of these two want to share a word because I didn't tell them ahead of time. They're more than welcome to do so. Uh, Craig just nominated me to speak, so thanks, Craig. Um, I was not prepared. I did not know. They did an amazing job um, hiding this from me. I just want to quickly say that there are a few things that inspire me or have inspired me since I started volunteering and working with Prosperity Maine. Um, Mara O'Shea, Clement Yambe, and Claude Raganje, and all of the work that they do. So that inspires me. And the other thing that inspires me are all of the people I have met through Prosperity Maine and meeting people who are really here working to build new lives and make a better state for all of us to live in. So thank you. There is one thing that really made me so happy since I started this organization. And this work is the work of supporting a Salam Seeker student. I've never been happy until when I saw that Prosperity Maine was able to offer full scholarship to few students who are going to SMCC this fall. Let me welcome my dear friends, Wyatt, and Megan to come on stage to tell you the winner of the three scholarship going to SMCC. Good evening. My name is Megan Piper. And Wyatt and I have the honor of serving on a Prosperity Main Committee together. Last year, at this event, we raised funds towards a new and exciting program, the Prosperity Main Scholarship Fund. In conjunction with your contributions, and a significant anonymous donation, we are very pleased to be awarding three full scholarships to Southern Maine Community College. <laughs> Higher education is key to the success and growth of new Mainers. Prosperity Maine Scholarship Fund seeks to identify candidates with the following qualities hard work ethic, resourcefulness, academic perseverance, leadership, and a commitment to one's community. The scholarship committee was impressed with the caliber of candidates and the way each one embodied all of these qualities. Please join me in learning about and congratulating our inspirational scholarship recipients. Our first Prosperity Main scholarship recipient is Mahdi Farah. <laughs> Mahdi's teachers report that he is a devoted and responsible learner 
who is unfailingly polite, respectful, and cheerful. He has a special talent for improving every room he walks into. He puts people at ease and makes difficult tasks doable. Mahdi has an insatiable intellectual curiosity and seeks to expand the lab technician skills he learned in his home country into a career in the medical or biology field here in Maine. Congratulations, Mahdi. Our next scholarship recipient is Mervedi Bayangana. Mervedi is a testament to perseverance, resilience, and strong academic skills. She excelled in her first year at SMCC while working full-time and volunteering in her community. She is pursuing a pre-med degree with her sights set on medical school. She wants to help build hospitals and, in her words, make a positive mark on the history of her country and the entire world. Congratulations. And our final 2018 scholarship recipient is Hussein Muhammad. Currently enrolled at SMCC, Hussein stands out due to his impressive level of intrinsic motivation. Inspired by his late parents' business careers, Hussein is studying business administration with a focus on HR management. He developed an interest in serving his community early in life and feels a deep obligation to contribute to the well-being of his community and not only his personal success. As a teenager, he raised funds to cover patients' fees at a public hospital in his home country. And since his move to Maine, he actively participates in a group that shares African culture and tradition with Mainers. Congratulations, Hussein. And please join me in one more round of applause for our first three ever scholarship winners. I understand that Hussein has some words he'd like to share with us. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as already mentioned, my name is Hussein. I moved to Maine in 2016. I started uh, to take ESL classes at uh, Portland Adult Education, where I, got, I graduated last summer and got my high school diploma from there. Um, I'm very honored today uh, to receive this scholarship. This scholarship won't uh, only allow me to go to school for free, but this also is going to help me to uh, take time and volunteer and contribute back, uh, contribute back to my community. Um, I want to thank to Prosperity Maine for giving me this scholarship. I want also thanks to the donors who uh, are giving this money for uh, students to make a difference in their lives. Um, I'm so honored to, to be here today, and I'm so inspired to, to help others today. Um, I want to thank Claude uh, for his job and the staffs of uh, Prosperity Maine. Um, and I want to say thanks to everyone. I'd just like to say one more thing before Claude comes back up. The scholarship committee found it so difficult to choose only three people to receive these scholarships. Every single person um, that applied embodied all the qualities that I mentioned earlier. And so we hope that you will join with us in raising even more funds this year so that we can award a scholarship to every deserving candidate. So as you just heard about these three amazing students who because of your generosity last year are going to school for two years at no cost to them. This is when we need you to get out your phones and if you didn't see the 800 signs I put up everywhere, we are gonna do text to give tonight. 
It's very, very simple. I took my husband's phone, so thank you, honey. And I'm gonna walk you through this. It's very simple. Up on the screen, that number, 618-9528. All you need to do is send a text that says give to that number. And I'm gonna do it right here with you. I'm gonna spend your money tonight, hon. Hope you don't mind. 9528. Type in the text give, hit send. Hopefully I got the number right. Nope, I, I did the, well, I just sent a text to somebody else saying give. <laughs> so you might get an interesting response later, hon. I'm not sure what they would want you to give, but. 618-9528. Take out your cell phones, do it with me. It's easy, it's fun. It will come up with the text. How much would you like to give? Han, how much do you want to give? While you are doing that. Yes. Ho, ho. Guys, you see the number? Oh my gosh, it's coming. We have a goal of 10,000. However, because of the passion that I have throughout talking about communities and the this scholarship, I was so touched when an anonymous donor said, because of your generosity of helping others, I'm going to give 75,000 to this scholarship fund. <laughs> 75,000 for the scholarship fund. So, but I have a challenge to do. He said, I need you to match 75,000. So, I can't do this alone. I need the support of all of you to be able to send few more students, not only at SMCC, but also to our main. So we need to raise at least 10,000 tonight so that I can go home and feel like 10,000, now I have a next goal of 65. But if you can give 50 to match that, I will appreciate that. So I want to say, please help me reach this call tonight so we can send more students to school. Thank you. When you walk through the prompts, and I'm just about there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a link to take you to a website where you can pretty easily answer your, uh, enter your card information and your gift will be automatically recorded up on the screen. So this is open for 24 hours. I invite you to continue to give while we do our next presentation, and then we'll come back on after the next part of the program in order to see where we're at. So at this point, I would like to invite Clement Yambe to the stage. He's going to introduce three current and former students, just to give you a little bit of a background on some people who have really benefited from the services and the counseling provided by Prosperity Maine. So can I get a round of applause for Clement? And keep giving. Good evening everyone. We are very happy to have you all here tonight. Financial literacy is an essential survival tool for American families, especially as the tapestry of the U.S. financial systems become increasingly complex. For many low-income families, particularly newly arrived immigrant, financial literacy can be a stepping stone out of poverty. Coming from a foreign country, immigrants face, immigrant face so many challenges to readjust or resettle in a new environment and face new realities. Financial access is knowing what one's financial options are and having product and services to choose from. The success of today's immigrant who come to the United States largely seeking to improve their own prospect for prosperity depend on their access 
to mainstream financial institutions that can help them save money, buy homes, access credit, start businesses, and otherwise build wealth. To help immigrants begin their lives in the United States with greater financial promise, CFL embarked on this long journey to teach individuals and family gain knowledge about banks, savings, investments, and so on. Every year we provide financial literacy classes to hundreds of individuals from all over the world. And for today's event, we have selected three of them to come and share their experiences with us. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's panelists. The first panelist is Riyab Altuma. Riyab moved to Maine in August 2016 from Iraq. She has a bachelor's degree in English literature. Riyab worked as an English teacher with both middle and high school for more than 20 years in Iraq. She currently works as a parent community specialist with Portland Public School, and she is also an interpreter. This is Riyab. Our second panelist is also from Iraq. He's a senior at Portland High School, and in a few days, he's graduating. Mohammed Al Ahmedi is an ambitious and hardworking young man. And this is what's interesting about Mohammed. He has just opened a car garage and a used car dealership in Gorham, Maine. So for the past two hours, I was with Mohammed on the phone. He was in New Hampshire. I'm trying to tell him, if you don't show up, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> Our third is Barakat Bayrou. Barakat is originally from Eritrea, where he was doing business, building hotels, and doing farming. He holds a bachelor degree in applied mathematics, and he uses his free time touring high schools and college students at the Immigrant Welcoming Center, Portland Library, and SMCC. Barricade. Great. So I will be asking them some questions, and they will share some experiences uh, with us tonight. My first question goes to Mohammed. Mohammed, you are only 20, and I remember the first time I saw you in my class. And if you didn't know, Riyab is Mohammed's mother. Riyab came to the first class, and on the second class, she was dragging Mohammed into the class. So, Mohammed, did your mom force you to come to class? <laughs> no, he did not. She, did she didn't. Yeah, she did Riyab, why did you want Mohammed to learn about uh, finance, to, to have skills about financial literacy? Um, first of all, I would like to say that because I get a lot of information uh, from the uh, CLF uh, C C C CFL classes, uh, how to manage uh, money, uh, how to save uh, money. Uh, in fact, um, uh, they help us uh, a lot in their classes. So uh, after that, an idea came to my mind that, uh, that I uh, talked with my uh, son, Mohammed, uh, because he, uh, in fact, he would like to start a business, but he uh, could, uh, doesn't know how to start his business. And at that time, um, he, uh, I, I would like to say that <laughs> uh, he just want to spend money. Whenever he got money, he want to spend money. He uh, d doesn't have the idea or how to uh, save money. And therefore, I invite him to this class, and he get a lot of information from, from Clement. Uh, and after that, I noticed that he changed his ideas were changed, and he decided to start his business. And uh, in fact, he uh, started his business, and now he started to uh, how he know how to 
manage his money, how to st he start to save uh, money from his business, and he has a lot uh, of information. Okay, thank you. Mohammed, I will come back to you. <laughs> Barakat, you had a long experience be being a businessman. What do you think that the class you took from CFL was important to you? Uh, basically, when he just moved to a different place, I came from Africa and uh, I had no idea how the system of ES work, especially with the financial system. So, uh, once I got the opportunity to take class in CFL, uh, I came to realize uh, that uh, I have to make money, I have to save money, and I have to, to know how to invest my money. So CFL is the best connector of new people coming who doesn't know the system with the community. So it helped me to connect myself with the community. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we see CF CFL, when they just present the, the, the lecture system, I was really amazed because my first day that I joined the class, when I see 401k, I said, what is this? This is the address for a street or <laughs> why did they bring 401k? So, I just came to realize that there are so many benefits there are so many things that, so many banks that I have to know different ways of saving and using my money. So it's very nice connector for me. Great. So uh, the next question goes to Mohammed. Mohammed, what do you think that the class you took was very important to you? Well, the class is very important because, as you told you, I was spending money I don't know how. <laughs> I just traveled to New York, to Boston every, every week, every yes. month. And then she told me about the class. I was like, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> and then I went, and then I learned a lot of stuff. And your mother told me a lot of things about you. One of the things she said that you've been teaching people, your friends, about yeah. these classes. What have you been teaching them, Mohammed? <laughs> I'm teaching them how to save money. How to save money. And how to make money. <laughs> Great. <laughs> And the next question is, what is the most interesting and useful financial advice you have received from the class that you can teach to your children, Riyadh? I know you, you taught Mohammed. Yes. But what else can you teach to your other children? I learned a lot of uh, information because, uh, in fact, we are, uh, I can say we are ignorant about the financial uh, uh, in uh, American system. So we learned a lot about uh, how to manage mon our money, how to uh, start uh, opening uh, our uh, bank accounts, how to make the saving and uh, checking accounts, how to build uh, our credits, and it is uh, good uh, if, it, uh, if we build our uh, uh, good credits rather than the bad uh, credits. And um, uh, 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 the most important thing that uh, uh, that we need to uh, if we, uh, decide our uh, short uh, ter uh, terms uh, goal, uh, short uh, goal terms, and the long uh, ter uh, terms, yes, the, the goals, uh, and how to decide these, and how to uh, build our uh, budget in order to get these uh, goals, and in order to achieve these uh, goals. Mm -hmm. Same question to Barricade. Uh, I would just tell them the same. Uh, they have, you have to save money when you are at early ages, because uh, when you save money, it's helpful for your future. So at the same time, you have to save money for college, for retirement, and uh, you also have to improve your, your skill. As, uh, you have to do the job that you love. Uh, you also have to become efficient in, in quality person in your performance. 
to do all this, you need money. So I would like to advise my kids that they have to save money, they have to plan very well, they have to see their short and long-term plans, and uh, they have to be very effective in the community as well. So that's what I can tell them. Great, great. And uh, would you describe a situation when you had to make a financial decision and you thought about what you learned? Yes, of course. Um, always uh, our life is uh, filled with a lot of decisions. Every day we have so many things coming in front of us. And uh, it, dif it becomes very difficult which to, to choose which one will be the first one. And uh, when that one comes, CFL is uh, uh, a, very, a very strong tool. Why? Because we are now learning how to budget our daily life. We learn how to list our all short and long plans. And uh, we learn we, that we have to keep money for, for uh, security. That's the, because uh, if you don't keep money aside, somehow for your security, when a problem comes, you, your life is going to be affected. So uh, you have to organize yourself with what you are going to do based on what you have. You should not be a person who is doing things by opportunity or by chance or by emotions, but you have to look what kind of job you are looking, how much is your income, and then what is your short goal, and then how are you going to decide for the things that are ahead of you? You can tell that Barricade was a very good student. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can teach that class now. <laughs> Mohammed, yes. how did you make that decision of starting a business? I know you just told us that every weekend you were going to Boston and New York to buy sneakers, I guess. <laughs> when did you make that decision of starting saving money and start a business? Well, um, I made that decision after I took the class, of course, the CFL. Um, I started to save money, I started to make money, I started to do my business after that class. I learned a lot of stuff in that class. Um, and I want to get in like best life in the future. We're going to ask that question to Ria. Ria, <laughs> is he really saving money? Yes, he starts now. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to have a, a mother who is also a teacher, right? So, my last question goes to Barakat. What do you think CFL class was important for yourself and for others in the immigrant community? CFL uh, is very important for the community because um, if you are to discuss with a landlord or if you are to look for a job for a company, you need to have a knowledge of uh, financial knowledge. Uh, I remember many of my friends who have gone for searching a job when they ask them that uh, if they are where they have to put their money, their salaries, many of them, they have, they have taken their money in their pocket and they have come home. So, but once you are conscious about the banking system, about how to save money, uh, about which is a better job for you, how to improve yourself, then you will have a better life. So I learned from CFL that I should become an efficient person uh, and uh, a good person in the community. That uh, when you go to certain, uh, let's say, companies, uh, because you have some background or understanding of the banking system or understanding of your saving or your credit score, it is very helpful that you are releasing some of the, the, the load for the companies. So. I really want to thank all the panelists tonight for accepting to be here. Mohammed, I'm sorry for calling you probably 30 times today. And I really, it was a pleasure to have you in my class. 
And uh, we have the stories like this every day, and that's our biggest reward. When we help one person at a time, they come back with a testimony like that. It, all, it, it motivates us every day to wake up in the morning, come to work, and make a difference in the community. I really want to thank you for coming tonight, and uh, let's give a round of applause to our panelists tonight. I mentioned earlier uh, that Clement is one of the people who inspires me. If you really want to be inspired, uh, make arrangements with Claude to go to one of his classes. It's pretty amazing. You've just heard from three student panelists. We've also heard, heard a little bit about three scholarship recipients. I just want to remind you that every dollar we raise here tonight will be matched, and it will go toward a scholarship fund uh, for more students. So we're going to take a quick look at our text to give. Also, please remember that that is open for 24 hours, so you can continue to give, and you can remind your friends to give. And if you want to know what the number is, just give Mara a call tomorrow. And she will gladly tell you uh, what that text to give number is. With that, uh, the, the end of our program has come, but before we let you go, I'd like to invite Bill Brown, who is the chair of our board, up to give you some closing remarks. Thank you, Helen. Um, would you mind if I tell you a few things that I've done for at least 10 years? It's a long list. I'm not a spring chicken. Well, let's see. I've been working at my job for about 30 years. Um, as some of you may know, I'm employed by Barry Dunn, a firm over on uh, Middle Street here in Portland. I've been a father for 24 years. That's pretty good. I've been married for 12 years and a stepfather for 12 years. That's awesome. Um, and I've been a director of community financial literacy for 10 years. Thank you and a director of Prosperity Maine for about 15 minutes. <laughs> That's certainly not a comprehensive list, um, but even if I were to uh, torture you the rest of it, it really wouldn't be that long because the things on that list are really only the items that are uh, the most important roles, responsibilities, and activities in my life. Um, so how did CFL, now Prosperity Maine, come to make the short list of uh, decade-long activities in my life? Um, and, you know, to be honest, it's because it's appealing as a volunteer activity. There are a lot of higher reasons, more altruistic reasons, but um, in some ways it's, it, it's a lot of work, but it's easy to volunteer for CFL because um, it appeals to me. Um, it fulfills my need for immediate gratification, believe it or not. Um, it speaks to economic needs and financial issues. I'm an accountant. I like things that speak to people's uh, monetary needs and desires. And it presents a challenge. It presents a challenge, take my word for it. How does this organization provide immediate gratification? It's probably not what you usually get sold on when volunteering or joining a board or donating money. We have a high impact. Um, our work makes a significant, tangible, and noticeable difference in the lives of our students and the participants in our programs. Uh, and the community, too. Uh, the changes brought about uh, through CFL's work are not subtle. We get quick results. The skills that are learned in our classes and the benefits obtained from our programs have an immediate effect. You just heard that. The results that we achieve are not gradual. And it's intuitively appealing. Practically anybody with a pulse can understand what we do and, uh, and why we do it, too. Uh, our mission is not arcane or academic. We do address financial issues head on. Um, one of the absolutely first uh, appealing aspects to me of CFL was that we promote financial responsibility, fiscal responsibility. I mean, it seems obvious, but very important. Um, we help people to understand that spending less than you make is critical. Again, you've heard that. Um, we encourage good stewardship of resources and proper prioritization of spending. CFL, as a program, definitely does not 
enable irresponsible financial behavior. Quite the opposite, I'd say. One thing that I think is very important is that CFL Prosperity Maine now is itself a role model for fiscal responsibility. We practice what we preach. I can guarantee you that our executive director and our finance committee leading our board conservatively manage our cash flow, our budget, and our assets. Mr. Ganje watches every penny. Mr. Eric Boucher is not one to have the wool pulled over his eyes. Every dollar that comes in to Prosperity Maine uh, is treated like the first, and I do remember the first dollar. We are here to ensure the sustainability of this organization, and that drives our financial decision making. Prosperity Maine does not take our resources, our gifts, our funds, or our blessings for granted. We have a culture of gratitude. And last in the financial arena is something that you might not expect of a financial literacy organization. And that's that we have an abundance mentality. So while we are concerned about the basics, we're not just concerned about avoiding predatory lending practices or, or staying out of credit card debt. We help our students and our participants understand the difference between cost and value, between investment and expenditure. We're here to promote growth, increase in real value, and wealth accumulation. That's why we are now Prosperity Maine and not just community financial literacy. Prosperity Maine is not satisfied with just helping the members of our community to get by. That's not enough. We are about prosperity. And lastly, attractive, the, the last attractive feature is challenge. This is, this is an interesting one because um, challenge has a few different meanings. Um, this organization and its mission challenges stereotypes, stereotypes of immigrants, refugees, and asylees, their skill sets, their potential, their motivations, and their aspirations. Prosperity Maine doesn't accept the conventional wisdom about any of those things. It challenges us as volunteers and board members. Uh, this organization is all about optimizing its network, which includes volunteers, donors, corporations, the board, everybody. It demands a lot of us as volunteers and as board members and as members of the community, as supporters. Prosperity Maine doesn't believe that capacity is finite. And lastly, it challenges our imagination as we evolve and grow to meet the needs that we observe in the community and in the economy. Um, we don't just change for the sake of change. We change to seize an opportunity where we can utilize our structure, our resources, and our brand to meet those needs. Prosperity Maine does not rely on the past successes of CFL, which are many, when the future demands change. Case in point, the scholarship program. You've heard the difference that that's making. We live in a state with record low unemployment, consequently a labor shortage. We have a pool of young asylees who need an education in order to qualify for these jobs. But they don't have access to traditional financial aid. The scholarship program has stepped in to meet that need. Um, you know about our matching program, um, and if you haven't donated, I would encourage you to do that. Um, this is a way to make an impact right now. If this is your first exposure to Prosperity Maine, um, I hope that you can envision supporting this organization for another 10 years. If this is your 10th year supporting CFL and your first time supporting Prosperity Maine, I want to thank you and welcome you to the next decade. In any case, whatever you do, I hope that you will leave here inspired to support the goals of our immigrant families to obtain financial independence, help build the economy of this state through developing our untapped workforce, and join us in creating the business leaders of tomorrow 
who understand what, what it takes to start with a very little and build it to a very lot. That's prosperity. I want to say thank you, last of all, to our donors, our generous donors, our generous corporate sponsors, our tireless volunteers, our dedicated staff, our incredible board, and of course to all of you guests this evening. Um, you made a great choice coming out tonight, and we appreciate your support. Good night. <laughs>